I'd like to welcome you to the world of Chromagen, an exciting opportunity to assess both patients who suffer from colour vision problems and reading disorders. What we will be showing you in this presentation is the correct method of assessment for Chromagen patients so that you, the practitioner, can successfully and confidently prescribe Chromagen for both applications. Thank you, John. I'm now going to show you how to assess a patient who is colour deficient. Zara here has agreed that she will actually be our volunteer. And the first thing we need to do is to sight the dominant eye. There's a very simple procedure for this. If you get the patient, if you would follow me, Zara, to cross their hands like so, with a hole in their thumbs, and I'd just like you to look at that distant object over there for me. Okay, and I want you to tell me now, can you still see it? Yes. Can you still see it? No. Okay, we now know that Zara's left eye is her dominant eye, and we're going to begin with the non-dominant eye. What we're going to do is use the Ishihara test. I'm going to get Zara to look at several plates for us. What we're most interested in is the plates that Zara can't see, and these will be the plates that we will then use in conjunction with the filters. So, Zara, if you could just tell me what's on Number this plate. Eight. Thank you. And here? Number six. Okay, and here? Nothing. And here? Nothing. These two particular plates Zara sees nothing on. So these are the two plates we're going to use. If you could hold that for me. Just going to pop a trial frame on because all of our filters come in trial lens size. Okay. I would normally start with the warmer colours in the filters simply because this we found tends to give us the best results. You are more than welcome to take it through all of the colours, but I would suggest you start with the warm ones. OK, Zara, looking at these two plates, I just want you to tell me if anything becomes clear or apparent with any one of these filters. OK, so looking down here, I just want you to tell me... No any? different. No different, OK. And with this one. No different. OK. And with this one. No. OK. And how about now? Yes, that's better. OK. It is then usual to repeat the whole process with the dominant eye. You may find, and in 50% of cases we tend to find, that they will either want a complementary colour, something again in the warms, or they will have a contrasting filter, such as yellow or green. OK, we've now chosen the specific filters that Zara needs. In this case, it's just the one lens, which in 50% of cases it is. You would then take her back through the Ishihara test plates and just check that there is an improvement. Number eight. Number six. Number 15. Number 74. It's then a good idea to insert a contact lens so that you can then send them out so that they can have a look around at their environment and the scenery. It's a good idea to send them somewhere colourful. And then when they come back, they can tell you how things have changed and how things look different for them. Once they have come back, you can then give them the opportunity to choose either contact lenses or glasses. I'm now going to show you how to assess a patient with academic skills disorder or dyslexia. This is done in very much the same way as you would for a colour deficient patient, only the tests that we're using are slightly different. In the system you will find several different tests for reading, writing and spelling. Patients who suffer with academic skills disorder tend to have individual requirements. The tests that are included in the system reflect this. We have tests for such things as reading difficulties, spelling and the crowding phenomena where patients have difficulty with words that aren't correctly spaced. 
And for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to assume that Zara actually has a reading disorder. The reading tests within the system consist of random words that are grouped together depending on the individual's age. What you need to do is to assume that the individual can read at the age that they are. So Zara, if I give you this, and I'd just like you to read from this column of words here, okay, and I'm going to time you over a period of 60 seconds. What you do is you time them over a period of 60 seconds and mark down any mistakes or any words that they should insert. This is important because it's going to give you a baseline before you start to use the filters. You must remember though that anybody who has a reading disorder or has problems with reading may feel a little uncomfortable about reading out loud to you. Blonde. Anywhere. Because. Once the reading test is completed, we are then aware of what ability Zara is able to read. You would then reposition the trial frame and I'm going to give you some near vision test type or a paragraph of the written word just to read quietly to yourself. We're going to use this to ascertain which filters work best for Zara. The filters we're going to start with are those in the cooler colours of the spectrum simply because we find that these give us very good results although I would recommend that all filters are used. Okay Zara, looking at this for me, I just want you to tell me when it becomes more comfortable or easier to read. Okay, so... What about now? No different. Okay. And now? Yeah, there's an improvement. Okay. With this filter in place, you would then again assess the other eye. And you will normally find in 9 out of 10 cases that they will require another filter in the dominant eye. This is usually a complementary colour, either of the same shade or very near it. So if blue is chosen, they would choose an aqua. If aqua is chosen, a green. Once the filters have been chosen by the patient, you should then get them to repeat the reading tests that they had already previously done for you. You should see a marked improvement in both their accuracy and their speed. However, once the glasses or the contact lenses have been dispensed to the patient and they return for a monthly or three monthly visit, you will see that their ability has dramatically improved. What does the term haploscopic mean? Haploscopic actually means that it's individually prescribed. So each one of the filters is prescribed for each eye, okay. depending on the patient's response. Why in the contact lenses do we offer them in different densities? I notice that in the filters it's just one colour, but in the contact lenses we have different densities. Why is that? It's all down to light transmission and obviously the amount of light that passes or is lost passing through a spectacle lens is very different to that that is lost or that passes through a contact lens. And we find that with darker colours in contact lens form you get a much more vivid or dramatic response. Once a patient has been prescribed as a chromogen filter, whether it be spectacle or contact lens, is there any possibility of a reduction in vision? That shouldn't reduce their vision in any way, but it may interfere with their contrast sensitivity and they may lose that slightly. If this is the case, and it should be checked both before the filters are, are presented to the patient and afterwards, then we normally give them the lighter shade in the contact lens modality. Why would we recommend that the patient return after three or six months, especially if they've been assessed for ASD? If they've been assessed for ASD, you obviously know where their ability or what ability they had before they were fitted with the filters and where they were just after being fitted with the filters. One, if they've got contact lenses, you need to have them back to give them a contact lens check anyway. And two, it actually gives you a chance to assess them again to see how they've moved on and how they've progressed. We know that Chromogen is available in contact lenses and spectacle format. 
If you have a patient who really wants the spectacles, but they're a bit embarrassed because they may have chosen a pink or a blue filter and they don't want to go on the street, what can we do about that? It's quite simple. We are actually able to mirror coat the front surface of the lenses. So it masks the fact that they're wearing two different colours. This does have a downside, wherein it makes it very, very dark for the wearer. And if they are for academic skills disorder sufferers, that can make it difficult for them to read inside. So we would probably either suggest that they don't have the mirror coating or switch them to the contact lens modality. Thank you, Josie. I hope by watching this presentation you feel confident about prescribing Promagen for the benefit of your patients and your practice. Thank you.